Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That's, uh, this Bible study is going to be called, God Never Changes. And the attributes of God contrasted with the attributes or characteristics of God. Jesus, who is the Christ. Now, something you should know. Because of Alexander the Conqueror, who was a Macedonian, a Greek, he conquered basically the entire known world in the Middle East. And when you're conquered, you learn the language of the conqueror. That's how it works. Greek was the common language of commerce and business in the days of Christ. When Pilate was talking to Christ, I will, I could almost guarantee you that Jesus and Pilate were not speaking in Latin. And I doubt Pilate was speaking to Christ in Hebrew. I, I seriously doubt that. I bet you they were conversing in Greek because Greek was a very, very common language back in those days. Matter of fact, most, uh, most the Romans, especially those that lived outside of Italy, they all spoke Greek. I mean, Greek was... Uh, the Romans took much of their culture from the Greeks. And the Romans were just, you know, their language was Latin, but they were a recent conqueror to the area. And they had defeated the Greeks and basically took it over. But the thing is, when there was the superscription, the writing of, on the cross. It was in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. So there's a, you know, Greek was the common language. So the New Testament was written in Greek. And I mean, there's people who'll tell you otherwise, but I, I, I think they're liars. They, I don't think they know what they're talking about, but all right, let's take a look at God's attributes contrasted with Christ's attributes. In Malachi 3.6, For I am the Lord, I change not. In other words, God doesn't change. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So God never changes. Well, in Hebrews 13 and verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. So, Jesus never changes. Okay? So, God is the only Savior. A man cannot save himself or anybody else for spiritual eternal salvation. I mean, somebody might be able to drag you out of a, a river and keep you from drowning, but salvation is of the Lord. So let's take a look. It says, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. And that is found in Isaiah 43 and verse 11. In Jude 1, verse 12, to the only wise God, our Savior. In Titus 2.10, God is our Savior. I'm sorry, God our Savior. In 1 Timothy 4.10, we trust in the living God who is the Savior. Luke 1.47, God, my Savior. All right, so God is the only Savior. Well, 
in 1 John 4 and verse 14, 1 John 4, 14, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Peter 3.18, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, 2 Peter 3.18. 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not reading the entire verses, but this is in there. Uh, John 4.42, the Christ, the Savior of the world. Titus 1.4 The Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Luke 2.11 A Savior which is Christ the Lord. In Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name, my friends, is Jesus, not Yeshua HaMashiach, which does not appear in the Bible anywhere. The, uh, I believe it's in the book of Titus. It says, pay no heed to Jewish fables. Well, that's some good advice. Don't listen to Jewish fables. Matter of fact, Martin Luther, a man I respect greatly and look forward to meeting one day, said that there's more wisdom in the tales of Aesop, Aesop's fables. Yep, Aesop's fables. Perhaps you've heard of the fox and the grapes, the wolf in sheep's clothing, the tortoise and the hare. Something about Hercules, you know, yeah, the tortoise and the hare. Um, the ant and the grasshopper. These were all Aesop's fables. Well, Martin Luther said that there was more wisdom in these children's stories than there was in all the Talmud. And uh, quite frankly, I believe it. The Goose and the Golden Egg. I mean, you know, that's uh, another one of Aesop's uh, fables. So, so, yeah, when people try to tell you Yeshua, uh, run, run, run. All right, uh, 2 Timothy 2.10. The captain of their salvation, perfect through sufferings. And they're talking about Jesus here. In Hebrews 5, 9, he is the author of eternal salvation. Now, God created the universe and the earth by himself. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Isaiah 44 and verse 24. Or, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, guess what? Jesus created the heaven, the universe, and the earth. Hebrews 1, verse 10. Unto the Son he saith, Thou Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Hmm. John 1 and verse 3. By him, and that's speaking of Jesus, by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. All things were created... I'm sorry, hold on a second here. John 1, 3. All things were were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In Colossians 1.16 we read, By him, and speaking of Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. All things were created by him and for him. Sorry, I'm getting my notes mixed up here. A lot of work. 
God is the Word, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Didn't become God, which is a Jehovah's Witness false teaching. No, the Word was God from the beginning. And Jesus is the Word. We read this in John 1, verse 14. The Word was made flesh. Flesh didn't become the Word. No, the Word became flesh. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In Isaiah 41, verse 4. I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am he. So God is the first and the last. Did you know that Jesus is the first and the last? Revelation 1 and verse 17. Jesus said, fear not, I am the first and the last. Can a man forgive sins? Absolutely not. Only God can forgive sins. In Psalms 103, verses 2 and 3, The Lord forgiveth all thine iniquities. Mark 2, 7. Who can forgive sins but God only? So only God can forgive sins. But yet in Mark 2 and verse 5, Jesus forgives sins. Jesus said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Guess what? God is our Redeemer. Isaiah 63 and verse 16. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. God is the Redeemer. But in Titus chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us that he might redeem us, redeem us from all iniquity. So God is our Redeemer, and yet Jesus redeemed us. Huh. God is one. Deuteronomy 6.4 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Well, guess what? Jesus and God are one. John 10.30 I and my Father are one. In John 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 10, and one fourteen, You can read all these and I'm cutting them up because I don't want to make this a 20-hour study, which I could, but people don't want to spend that much time. Jesus said, in John 10 and verse 30, I and my Father are one. All right, and then in John 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 10, 1, 14, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John 14, 9. Jesus saith, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. John 5, 7. Boy, I tell you what, this is a really hated verse among people. They try to tell you the King James Bible is wrong. Well, they're wrong. 1 John 5, 7. Jesus, um, let's see. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now, in Genesis 1.26, And God said, Let us, plural, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the flesh of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, how can God be one 
and then say, let us make man in our image. Okay, what's up with that? Well, let's take a look. Well, guess what? 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Paul tells you how to rec uh, reconcile this. And we read, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh. And I pray God your whole spirit, one, and soul, two, and body, three, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know that you have a spirit, a soul, and a body? That's three parts. Does that mean that you're three people? No. No, you got a body, a soul, and a spirit. So when God says, let us make man in our image, uh, is, does that, do you, do you get, do you reconcile that? Do you, do you get it? There's one God and you're one person, but you're made up of a body, a soul, and a spirit, three parts. So guess what? For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Do you get it? Did you know God has a son? Psalms 2.7 The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. In John 5.18 Jesus said also that God was his father. God is the Holy One. Psalm 71.22 I will also praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth, O my God. Unto thee will I sing with the harp, O thou Holy One of Israel. Psalm 78.41 Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Psalms 89.18 For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Isaiah 10.20 And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The Holy One, people. Psalm 16.10 For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. A messianic psalm, people. All right, so God is the Holy One. Jesus is the Holy One. Acts 2, 27. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. And then in Acts 3, 13 and 14, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. See, when people try to tell you that Rome was responsible for the death of Jesus, they're liars or they're ignorant. Pilate wanted to let Christ go. Pilate tried to let Jesus go. But they delivered him up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye, speaking to the Jews, but ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer, Barabbas, and desired a murderer be granted unto you. And then in Acts 13, 34 and 35, And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now, no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore, he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. 
Only God is worshipped. Matthew 4.10 Then saith Jesus unto him, to the devil, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. In Matthew 9.18 we read, While Jesus spake these things unto them, Behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him. Hebrews 1, six, And again, when God bringeth in the first begotten, that's Jesus, that bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. In John 20.28, 20, And Thomas answered and said unto Jesus, He said, My Lord and my God. And did Jesus correct him and say, no, 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 uh, you got it wrong. Uh, you got it wrong, Thomas. No, he didn't correct him. No, he did not. And just remember something. When Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan, the Spirit of God in the shape of a dove came down. Let's read that. All right, uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God. Remember, body, soul, spirit. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Nothing changed, people. In Isaiah 9.16, God is going to be the Messiah. Okay? Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Read it. Isaiah 9, 6. Read it. And yet, in John 4, 25 through 26, the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. God is everlasting. We read this in Psalms 93, verses 1 and 2. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. And yet, in Micah 5.2, But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, out of thee shall, out of thee shall he come forth unto the, me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. In Isaiah 42, 8, God is alone is going to be glorified. I, the Lord, I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. So much for the Queen of Heaven. So much for an angel. You see, the, Jesus, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they have no wits. They're Jehovah's false witnesses. They teach that Jesus is Michael the angel, and he's going to get glory. But the Bible says, Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. God's not going to give his glory to an angel. No, no way. In John 17, 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Who's speaking here? Jesus. 
And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. John 5, 23. All men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Somebody send the Jews a memo, please. Hebrews 1, 8. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Guess what? God is the great I Am. In Exodus 3.14, And God said unto Moses, Now, Moses had asked God, Hey, uh, when I go to the children of Israel and they ask me, well, what's your name? What am I going to tell them? I mean, after all, Egypt had Hathor, had Set, had all kinds of different Ra. They had all kinds of these different gods. Matter of fact, the plagues of Egypt was a challenge to the gods of Egypt. They had a god of the Nile. They had a god of the frogs. They had a god of weather. I mean, that's what, that's what all those plagues of Egypt were. It was a challenge. And God won, and the gods of Egypt failed. So, you know, there were, Moses was like, well, what am I going to tell these people when they ask me, what's your name? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And that's Exodus 3.14. And then the Jews asked Jesus some things, and in John 8.58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. All right. God healed all diseases. Psalms 103, verse 2. Bless the Lord who healeth all thy diseases. Matthew 8, 16. Jesus healed all that were sick. God is the judge of the world. Psalms 94, verse 1 and 2. O Lord God, to whom vengeance, vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself, lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth, render a reward to the proud. Genesis eighteen twenty five. Abraham, speaking to God, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Now, this is, he was speaking, saying this when uh, he was going to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and, you know, Lot was there. You could read the story. And yet in 522, guess who's the judge of the world? Jesus said, The Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. God has life in himself. John 526. The Father hath life in himself. And in John 1, 4, So hath God given to the Son to have life in himself, in Jesus, uh, is speaking of Jesus. In Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. God raises the dead. John 5, 20. The Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, then in 521, the Son quickeneth whom he will. And if you still don't think that Jesus is God, well, turn to 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. And without controversy, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, 
God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on them in the world, and received up into glory. Check this out. Hebrews 1, verses 8 and 10. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Jesus Christ, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made and was made in the likeness of men. Yeah, God was made flesh. Flesh did not become God. He was God in the beginning and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Huh. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. John 1, 1 through 4 and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Christ, who is the image of God. Huh. Um, are you starting to get the idea? Colossians 2 and verse 9, For in Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of of the Godhead bodily. Matthew 1, 23. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Wow. Just remember something. 1 Timothy 3, 6, people. Okay? And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Why is that so hard to understand? God became flesh. He became a man. Remember, we were made in God's image. We have a body, a soul, and a spirit. We are three parts make one person. So when you hear people say, well, you know, Jesus is just a man. Well, guess what? If that's true, they have no Savior. Because we read in Romans 3.23, For all, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, only God is without sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, guess what? If Jesus is just a man, he's a sinner. We don't have a Savior. 
if he's just a man. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yet in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched without the feelings uh, with, a, with the feeling of our infirmities, but was tempted in all points. I'm sorry, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. See, Christ was without sin. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. You see, only God is without sin. Remember that. If Jesus Christ is not God in the flesh without sin, if he's just a mere man, then he's a sinner, and we look for another Savior. And if you're looking for another Savior, go hang out with the Jews because they're looking for the same thing. What's the conclusion? Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Period. It's Chaplain Bob signing off. I hope you enjoy this. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus who is the Christ. Amen.